There are two ways to use the Keyboard Design Collection tool to map individual designs to keyboard characters. We can batch map, which can be done in the embroidery library, and this works great when you have standard letters, uppercase, lowercase, and numbers, or you can map designs individually, and you'll need to do that for punctuation and special characters. There are also two places that you can map designs, the design library, which is where we are now, and the embroidery workspace. Batch mapping can only be done in the design library. Also, if you have a lot of individual designs to map manually, it's quicker here because you don't have to open them one at a time. Now you notice that I have the hint stalker open and it's displaying keyboard design collections. If you want to find that one, click on the collections tool and open your hint stalker and you can learn more about the tool. I'll close the docker. I'll click on collection. The keyboard design collection docker opens and you can also access it from over here. Now currently it's showing the one font that I have mapped. I want to map this one. But before we do that, let's take a look at one of these letters. This is a Hatch EMB grade A design. This design was created in Hatch. We can see that we have an applique object, a red work object, and some satin covers. If I turn off tree view, you can see that we have a triangle out here. This represents the frame out for the appliques. I also have some triangles in here and one down here. So this is a multicolor design. You can see that we have our placement line, our tack down, some decorative stitching, and the satin cover. Now in this case, the satin cover happens to be an elastic embossed fill. So that means we can actually make these letters larger than if we had a normal satin fill because we have these extra needle penetrations in here and the stitches won't get too long. These are some things you might want to look at before you map a font because it will help you determine how large, how small you can set these letters. So go back to the design library. First I need to create a new collection. I'll click the new button and I'll give it a name. Now it's getting the name right now from this folder. And I can use that name or I can change it. I'll just keep it. Now it's asking for a reference height. I have a letter selected, so I could use this to set my reference height. It doesn't necessarily have to be the letter M. I'll say use selection and it measures the letter and it gets the height in here. The default value for character spacing is 10%. That works well for this letter set. And now for the recommended height range. This font is an applique. If I shrink it too much, the satin cover may become too narrow to cover the fabric edge sufficiently. Of course, you could just skip the fabric and that would solve that problem. And as I pointed out earlier, the satin cover uses an elastic embossed fill. So it can actually be enlarged quite a bit without causing excessively long stitches. The general recommendation for height range for a grade A design is plus or minus 20%. But really, only testing will truly give you an accurate range. 20% of 84 millimeters is 17 millimeters. So I'm just going to round that off and say, 70 millimeters to 100 millimeters. And before I click OK, I want to check this and make sure it's correct because we can change the name of the KDC later, but we can't change any of these values. And remember, this is just a recommendation. It's not a restriction. You can still make it bigger than 100. You can make it smaller than 70. It's just a guideline. And I'll click OK. So our set has been created, but we have no letters in here yet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter by uppercase letters. So now we just see all the uppercase letters. And we have a little cell that we place each letter in. And what I can do with this, because all of these are named and they're individual files, I can select all the uppercase letters. I'll click Map Selected to A to Z. And there Hatch has created all the letters. And it's put the proper letter in the proper little slot or cell. Now let's do the numbers. I'll select the numbers, hold down the Shift key, select the last number. And I need to change this to numbers, or I could just do standard characters, 0 to 9. 
and it's put those in their proper slots. Notice these other ones are empty. That's okay. We don't have characters to put in those. Now I'll create a new design by lettering dockers open. There's my new KDC. I'll select it and I'll just type in ABC. Now it can take a while because these are much more complex than our standard embroidery fonts that are just satin stitches. So I'll go back to the design library. And if for some reason I mapped the wrong letter to the wrong slot or I wanted to replace something, I'll just select it, select the cell over here, and click Mac. Now in this case, it knows that there's already something there. And it says, do you want to replace it? I can replace it or I can skip it. I'll skip it. Now when you replace any letters in here, it doesn't affect any of the other ones. So for example, down here we have adjust baseline and spacing. We're going to do that in a separate lesson. If you were to adjust any baselines or spacing and then you had to replace a letter, it doesn't affect any of those others. They'll all keep their settings. Now let's say that I map this letter into there. And I realize, oh, I put it in the wrong slot. I can remove that mapping. This alphabet has almost all of the uppercase letters sitting on the same baseline. We scroll down here to the Q. You can see that it's not sitting properly. It's above the baseline. This little tail should be dropped below. And the way we correct that is by adjusting the baseline and spacing. Some of the numbers also need to be adjusted. We'll cover that in an upcoming lesson.